Earth Pulse, in association with Ford Motor Company's Heroes for the Planet. Who wouldn't fall for them? And when they're offered up for a photograph for a cuddle, who could resist? But after you meet Edwin Week and learn the true story behind these animals, you may think again. We're going to Thailand now, where an illegal pet trade threatens the endangered gibbon. The Floating Markets, one hour's drive from Bangkok. Colorful, friendly, exotic. Today, as every day, hundreds of tourists are entertained. Edwin Week could be a visitor from the Netherlands, but he's on reconnaissance. He's working with these undercover agents from the Thai Royal Forestry Department. Also hidden in the crowd are more operatives, volunteer members of WAR. WAR stands for uh, the Wild Animal Rescue Foundation of Thailand. And um, basically WAR is uh, trying to um, stop the suffering and torture of uh, all wild animals in Thailand. This is the target of Edwin's covert operation, illegal animal attractions. These tourists may not know it, but their photo opportunities fuel a sad trade in Thai primates. Well, they do various things to make them safe or useful for this kind of uh, practice. Um, they take out the, uh, the canines, the long teeth of the uh, gibbons. <laughs> they use amphetamines to uh, keep the gibbons awake. They're long sleepers. So they give them amphetamines to stay awake for the picture. For every gibbon earning a living for its keeper here, at least two are taken from the wild. To get a gibbon out of the wild, you have to shoot the mother. Usually gibbons are high up in the trees. So you shoot the mother, the mother falls down with the baby, and you pick up the baby. Okay. Edwin Week and the Thai Forestry Department plan to rescue these animals in a daring raid, arresting their owners and sending a strong message to merchants and tourists alike. More than three hours drive from the markets is the War Sanctuary. Funded entirely on donations, this is temporary home for victims of the pet and tourist trade. War cares for a variety of primates, especially the endangered gibbon, threatened by habitat loss and the wildlife trade. Is it a primate bond that draws us to these creatures? We can all be forgiven for falling for them, even Edwin. About two years ago, somebody brought me a, a baby monkey uh, about a month old, as these people knew that I was taking care of cats and dogs around the house. And without thinking, I, I took it in, uh, thinking that, you know, this would be uh, like another pet or something. Uh, and um, within 24 hours, I found out that it was totally different. Edwin's mistake is repeated many times over, not just in Thailand. But it's here he's been living for a decade and it's here he can make a difference. This is Tong, she's a, a white-handed gibbon as well. She's about 13, 14 years old and her hand has been cut off by uh, a police officer who used to own her. When she um, actually bit his daughter, he was so uh, angry with the animal, he had to teach her a lesson. So he just cut off her hand. This is Friday. Friday is a uh, crab-eating or long-tailed macaque. He's about a year and a half old. And he was a pet for um, some English tourists uh, who bought him at a tourist destination in the south of Thailand. They wanted to take him along to uh, the UK, but um, that's not possible. It's illegal. And um, they um, handed over this animal to the foundation about a year ago. Edwin hopes tomorrow's market raid may save at least some animals from a similar future. In our next episode, their fate is decided when the undercover team strikes.
Earth Pulse, in association with Ford Motor Company's Heroes for the Planet. Last episode, we met Dutch-born Edwin Week, a man on a mission to help Thailand's endangered primates. They are adorable, and that's the problem. Monkeys and gibbons are kept as pets and can also be lucrative tourist attractions. The damage goes beyond individuals held captive. It extends into the jungle where babies are taken and their mothers killed. To stop the harvest, Edwin wants to stop the demand. Each of the animals rescued by Edwin and members of the Wild Animal Rescue Foundation of Thailand has escaped a life of abuse. Uh, those two gibbons from Phuket, uh, Boy and Mai, uh, they were addicted to amphetamines. They give them amphetamines um, to stay awake all night, you know, uh, to go around the bars, to have pictures made with tourists. But these faces don't just seduce tourists. Many Thai people buy gibbons as pets illegally and then find them too hard to handle. That's when they contact Edwin. Today, he and volunteer worker Bente Van Alphen are rescuing another pet gibbon in need of sanctuary. This is where it should be. Hello. 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 Unmarried and without children, Suwapi Yamklin's gibbon is her whole world. The bond they have formed means it will be a difficult separation. Well, she's got the, uh, the gibbon already for uh, about 10 years. Fed it from when it was very, very small still, a baby. And she bought it at the uh, Chatu Chak weekend market in Bangkok. Well, she just bought it out of compassion. She loves the animal a lot. She's been crying when we came in and um, she said she really would like to keep the animal, but she knows it's better for it to go with us. This animal has bitten visitors in the past, so the vet Suwit Punadi prepares a tranquilizer. Menon, put it down on the floor to get some medicine in it. And I just told her that this is the second chance she gets for a better life, so it's hard to say goodbye. Okay. This gibbon is never going to be back into nature. It's too old. We want to give these animals the best possible environment, the best care, and the possibility to be among the same species. At least give them a feeling that they're not pets. They are wild animals, and they should be treated like that. Determined to stop gibbons being taken from the wild, Edwin is planning a wake-up call for poachers, traders, and tourists. It's early morning, and Thailand's famous floating markets are beginning to buzz. Mingling with the tourists and locals are undercover agents from the Thai Royal Forestry Department. The war team have no powers of arrest, but they can help identify illegal activity. It's a miserable life for the animal. Once these animals are with these people, they're just a, a thing to trade with, to do the business with. With their targets in sight, arresting officers move in, and suddenly, it's chaos. One of the gibbon owners is making a run for it, but Edwin and the forestry agents close in. The gibbon owner tries to unload his precious investment to his partner. But there's nowhere to hide. Two gibbons are confiscated, their owners arrested. The maximum fine is 40,000 baht, which is about 1,000 US dollars. They might get actually a jail term of about two years maximum. Word travels fast here. A large crowd gathers as the local media arrives. 
I hope, in Pattaya, in Phuket, all around Thailand, where people do the same thing with these animals, get all signs saying, hey, um, you got to stop this. These gibbons are bound for sanctuary. But as we discover in our next episode, others are still in need. And next, sanctuary at last for a rescued gibbon. Earth Pulse, in association with Ford Motor Company's Heroes for the Planet. Last episode, we watched animal crusader Edwin Week and agents of Thailand's forestry department raid a tourist market. They seized an illegally held gibbon, arrested its owners, and sent a strong message to merchants and tourists that animal exploitation will be punished. In the last chapter of this story, we see what's ahead for the latest addition to Edwin's sanctuary. Not all rescued animals can be rehabilitated. It's quite excited, I think. Older primates, too habituated to humans, will never leave Edwin's sanctuary. But this gibbon, seized at the market, may be young enough to learn. The first step is an introduction to its own kind. He looks a bit excited, but he also seems to be quite eager to get in there, so we're going to try it. Okay. One, two, Some three, animals are captured so young they grow to believe they're human. Edwin is testing to see if it remembers being a gibbon. The signs are positive. Recognition. He oh. <laughs> seems to be okay with the other guys. They don't seem to bother each other. Hey, you got a new neighbor? You got a new friend, huh? There's little time to savor the moment. Edwin and Bente are called to another rescue. I just got a telephone call about a monkey um, that's been with some people for a long time, gets quite vicious. I have arranged with the vet to meet us there. Once these animals get bigger, they need a mate they can't get one, they get aggressive. That's not the kind of pet that you want around or you want your neighbor to have. Yeah. This long-tailed maquette has been confined to this cage for eight years. There isn't even a door. Let's see, first if we can create some kind of a door to get him out. Look at it, look at it. Look at it. Five years ago, keeping pets like this was declared illegal in Thailand. But the owners who bought their pets before the ban have amnesty. I think he did the right thing. I, I wish he did it a couple of years earlier. That would have been much better for the animal. Again, you know, the right example uh, of somebody knowing what's best for the animal a bit too late. When the maquette wakes, for the first time, it will be amongst its own species. This baby maquette is ready for the next step in its rehabilitation. Introduction to a troop. Any kind of animal that comes in young enough that we can still teach to go back into nature or to a semi-wild place. And after that stage, I think for some of the animals, the big, big jungle might be the ultimate place. Hey, yeah, that's a surprise. You're a monkey. While these animals have found sanctuary, Edwin dreams of a time when there will be no more primates to rescue. Once you get the people to understand that you can't keep a wild animal as a pet, it's going to be much, much easier to, uh, to do this kind of work. It's very important that we uh, educate uh, the new generation and maybe they can uh, educate their parents. Maybe one day there will not be any sanctuary necessary anymore because no people are going to trade or keep wild animals as pets.